Hello Guardians, welcome back to another Destiny 2 kind of video. I say kind of because I'm actually going to be talking about Destiny 1 in this video. Which is something, it's rare to have, well, a video that's just dedicated to kind of, well, basically Destiny 1. Now obviously in the background I'm going to show Destiny 2 gameplay because, well, the Destiny 1 gameplay I have isn't really that good. So, we'll just stick with that. So, for this video I thought like, Again, since we have like quite a bit of time before the 30th anniversary event, I thought we'd look back on Destiny 1 and some of the nostalgic moments in Destiny 1. Now, I will say this as well, I haven't listed every single nostalgic point that's hit everybody's boners. I've only hit the ones that hit my boner. Sorry for the analogy, sorry. But, um, I've made this list on this other screen. And I'll just basically read out the points one by one and we'll go over like why it was so nostalgic for me. So, I was actually going to go over the everything tab first, but I think I'll just put that uh, behind the Moment of Triumph section. Yes, there's a Moment of Triumph 2017 section, because that time of the year mattered the most in Destiny 1 out of all of them. So, and again, I apologize if you hear me shuffling my towel, because uh, I, I was kind of dumb and went in without uh, turning on the water first and heating it up. So I'm get, literally recording this to wait for the water to heat up first. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, for the vanilla of Destiny 1, the first thing I have to mention is the intro mission. Now, of course, not for a lot of people is, is it nostalgic, but I've seen that intro mission so many times by now that it's it just basically become a form of nostalgia for me. Because every time I'm like, oh yeah, this, this thing, the intro mission, let's go. Because in Destiny 1, I did it three times for the three characters, and I never touched it again. In Destiny 2, uh, when the Red War was around, it just never was a thing. Until the, uh, well, until Destiny 2 went free to play during, I believe, the Shadowkeep era. And then they reintroduced the intro mission again. Which, uh, I think I did on all three characters again. So that's six times total. And then, with Beyond Light, they brought in the New Light player experience. And the story with that with Shah Han. And I played it another three times. So I did the intro mission nine times for the same characters. Well, three times for the same characters each. Which is mad to think about. And it's just, I don't know, just every time I hear that music as well, which is another point I'll be going across, like, as we go through the different expansions of Destiny 1. It's just, oh, it's just, it just rings nostalgia for me, honestly. And the last thing I'll mention about the vanilla campaign itself is the Black Garden fight. I thought, I don't know what it is about it, but when I think about that, I'm like, oh yeah, no, at the time, I thought that was pretty cool, you know? And, like, even when your character was, like, the ghost was like, uh, can you kill a god or something like that? And then you're just like, guess I'm gonna have to, you know, or something like that. It's just, like, it, it's nostalgic for the sake, I think it's because I was younger as well, and that's probably why I see it cooler than it actually was now or something like that. Because, I don't know, some people mightn't like it as they used to. Because the story in Destiny 1 was definitely all over the place. At least it's more concrete now. But now it's just a matter of getting the free light uh, story to be good. And uh, Let's be fair. I, I just really hope Bungie just don't mess up Savathun's, like story. Like, I really hope it's different than Forsaken, man. And uh, Beyond Light. Like, it'd be weird if it was the same thing. Like, oh. Savathun has people she trusts. Kill those people and... Then kill Sabathun herself, you know, something like that. I hope it's, like, I, I don't know. I, I guess, like, more philosophical, I guess. I hope, like, she kind of just goes into your psyche and gets your opinion on, oh, so uh, light and dark, uh, you know, they're both pretty chill, but, like, if you had to choose one, like, who would you side with, you know, that sort of stuff. But anyway, that's the end of the vanilla section. Let's move on to the dark below. The actual time I got into Destiny 1, believe it or not, and I have proof on Destiny 2, I don't know if I'm going to show it on screen, but there's a triumph I got. No, it was in Destiny 1, sorry, apologies. But, like, there was a triumph I got in the Moment of Triumph book that said that I joined around the Dark Below time. And I remember, like, once finishing the story, I think they, like, showed us the trailer for Dark Below. It's like, ooh, let's get that, <laughs> you know? And, like, I think at the time, even, we made sure to get the expansion pass and all. But, yeah, so... There's not really much else to mention except Crota Raid, because, like, let's be fair, Crota's end was just... Uh, it's, it's just... I've done it so many times, I think that's why it's, like, very nostalgic for me. Like, technically all the old raids are, so, but, like, uh, there's just something about Crota's end, man. Like, I, I, at this point, I don't think I've even played Fog yet. 
Because like, there's, like, at the time, there's, like, no point in playing it. Because all the, like, gear was, like, bad. The term wasn't sunset at the time, but all the gear was left behind before, so, yeah. Anyway, again, we're rapidly moving across now because I'm running out of words to say about each expansion. The House of Wolves. And all I wrote down was... <clears throat> Prison of Elders, yes. <laughs> Impress your warden. Yeah, that, that, that full thing, but I wanted to uh, include that as well. I don't know, it's just... Prison of Elders just feels like it's just been left in the dark, but to be fair, there's not really much point in bringing it back when we have Gambit, because that's kind of like... In a sense, it's kind of like that, but not at the same time. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's what Gambit just needs to do. Maybe we just need to turn it into Prison of Elders instead. And then we have, like, banks. Maybe they could do a combination mode. I don't know. It'd be cool even just for, like, an expan- Or not an expansion. A season. Where they're just like, you know what? Here's, the here's like, what Prison of Elders uh, could have been like. Etc, etc, you know? And, um, yeah. I remember as well during, like... I can't remember what time of year it was. But I remember seeing that, like, Skolos' thing used to be a raid. Which is mad to think about. Like, imagine, like... Doing the, like, instead of doing the, um, actual normal enemy encounters, like, the normal way, or however you used to do it, like, I think it was, <laughs> dismantle mines, yes, or you die, you know, stuff like that. Instead of doing all that, it was literally, like, each room had its own mechanic, and then at the end, like, it would lead you to Skolos' boss room, and obviously that'd have, like, big mechanics as well. God, what a future that would have been. Just imagine in general if after the Taken King we had two more expansions. Well, instead of like one big one. But anyway. Moving on to the big boy himself. The Taken King. The Taken King in general was just a good age of Destiny. I think it's just... It's the biggest nostalgic hit you can get out of all of Destiny 2. Or <laughs> Destiny 2? Out of Destiny 1. And it still kind of holds up now. Even when I'm thinking about it. Like the Oryx fight... The Dreadnought itself, King's Fall, and the April update. Like, I think it came out around that time. Which is bad to think about. Like, the Oryx fight was just... It was just so cool. Like, spoilers, by the way, if you haven't played the Taken King. But when you uh, are approaching Oryx's room where he's staying, like, this, um... I think it's, like, not a blight, but, like, the Toll and Little Wisp kind of thing leads you across and, like... Then it, like... A light shines across the ground, lighting up the door, showing that his, uh, Oryx's his symbol, like the Taken King. Then the door opens and everything's like dark and then reality kind of just collapses in on him and like, ah, oh, it just looks so cool, like. And like, just his voice swell, I will have vengeance. Ah, oh, it's just, it's so cool. Again, it's probably my younger self speaking on that behalf, but it's so cool. The Dreadnought. Now, like, let's be fair, the Dreadnought was the most... Uh, not convoluted, I guess convoluted in a good way, kind of place to be in, like. Because originally at first, even when I was going through it, I didn't think there was much. And I, I think I discovered, like, the uh, Cabal thing at the start. You know, like, when you first spawn into the map, I realized there that, like, oh, wait, there's secrets here. And I think that was the time I actually got into... Um, Destiny 2 YouTube, kind of, but not entirely. I think it was around actually 2017 when I did get into Destiny YouTube. Or at least, you know, watching other YouTubers, like, make uh, news and update videos on what's happening in Destiny to, uh, 1 and 2. Or Destiny 1 at the time, sorry. I keep saying Destiny 2, I'm so used to saying Destiny 2, I apologize. But, yeah, no, the Dreadnought's such a good place. It'd be a shame if that never comes back, but we're just gonna have to see we're gonna have to see for one if it comes back in witch queen which i highly doubt it does but if it does that'd be pretty epic and two like if it'll be as cool as it was because obviously in um when it comes to co like when the cosmodrome came back it didn't really come back as a whole so like if they're bringing back the dreadnought you have to bring back the whole thing or bring nothing back like let's be fair here king's fall now king's fall is a weird story for me because like i was doing King's Fall with a few people and like I don't know if it was malicious or not but I got kicked from doing it with my mate and like I never got the achievement as well well at the time I never got the achievement of doing a, um, a raid with clan members or something like that and like it, it, was such a, it was such a bummer moment for like the good part of a year before I went back into it I was like oh finally I actually did it and obviously I got the exotic weapon touch of malice and all that sort of stuff so yeah 
Honestly, at some point, I really do want to just... just I want to get my Xbox back again. I want to get an Xbox if it means that like I could just target like everything that's left in Destiny 1 that I still haven't finished to this day. But yeah, uh, the April update. Again, I'm not sure if this was around Taking King time or if this is actually during Rise of Iron time. But I'll mention it anyway because it was such a pivotal moment in the game. In the pond itself, it was like a mini, not season, but like a mini expansion. I'd say like probably the size that the 30th anniversary pack is going to be. W without all the big sandbox changes. Because I don't even remember if there was big sandbox changes at the time or not. I think it was just like, here's a new strike, here's a new story. I think it was just like one singular mission, because then it went into the new strike. Which is really cool, and obviously during Destiny 1 era, even just having a strike that was in the same areas wasn't even that bad. It was like, oh... Cool, new dialogue and shit. And like, there was also a new, uh, there was what the the for the Malak uh, strike. There was, oh yeah, the hunter could get his helmet. I think I think it was the hunter, which I think I used. I still have to this day. I, again, I can't prove it because I don't actually. I can't access Destiny One right now, unless like Bungie allow emulation of Destiny One on the uh, PCs at any time. But I, I doubt they will. But Bungie, if you are listening to this, please allow it. Just, just let me emulate Destiny One for the Xbox. Uh, I was gonna say 360 for the Xbox One on my PC, and I'll actually play it again. It'd be so gas. So moving on to Rise of Iron, we have Siva. Just in general, just Siva. It's just, it's cool. It's black and red. I don't think I'd need to say much about that. It birthed like the Splicers, Outbreak Prime. Raft the Machine, again, I don't need to say anything about that. And obviously it brought the Rise of Iron story into play as well, which my Titan was a big fan of at the time. Yes, my characters do kind of have story, but hey, I guess Destiny can be kind of a role-playing game sometimes too. Um, the Battle Axe. Now, like, obviously like the Scorch Cannons, the Battle Axe was such a cool thing to just find in the wild. It's like, wait, what is this? Oh, this is so cool. And, like, you just do the big slam and stuff. Again... Like, younger version of me talking here, like, being like, oh, that's so cool. Even though I say younger version, but this version of myself would have been four years younger than I am now? Yeah, five. five around five years younger. Um, I just mentioned Scorch Cannons, but, like, uh, Elemental Scorch Cannons were introduced during that time as well. The Arc and Void versions. And then Destiny 2 came around, and there's no Elemental versions of it anymore. Honestly... Uh, and actually, to be fair, I was going to say, like, they could try and do that for, like, the Crucible game out Scorch Cannons, but, like, I don't know. I think they might as well just leave it as it is. They don't really need to update that mode. I think it should just stay the way it is. Bungie just, in general, need to add more fun modes to Crucible. It's just, it's such a sweat fest half the time, at least when I've played. And then Wrath of the Machine. Oh my god, can we talk about Wrath of the Machine? How good it was, the atmosphere, how literally in the first encounter you encounter a boss. Like, fam, it was just so good. Like, the, even just the parkouring and discovering how to get Outbreak Prime was just so good. And the Outbreak Prime quest was just something else at the time. It was just, ah, oh, it's mad. But anyway, moving on to the second last section, Moments of Triumph 2017. Replaying the raids for armor. Now, it's not, I was, I'm not really going to talk about that because, like, it was kind of cool and how, like, Crota's end got the most, like, re rework out of all of them. But when it came to the moment of triumph, it was just cool. Like, I remember watching that stream and just being like, oh, my God, the armor is so cool. It glows and, like, you have these ornaments that let it, like, do this and that. It's so cool. Especially the Siva armor. You have to admit, the Siva armor was really cool. Especially, like, the one... Uh, I think it was the Warlock had a hole in their chest. And then the, the Titan's Wi-Fi signal booster, like, as well. Such a good, like... Ah, oh, such a good event. Man, <laughs> what I do to get back in time, go back to there. It was also the first time I ordered a Moment of Triumph shirt as well. Luckily, it was around the time of my birthday, so my parents were actually willing to let us have a bit of money so I could actually, like, <laughs> order it for my birthday, basically. Solo Skolos. Now, I know I already mentioned House of Wolves ages ago, but during that time, I believe, that's when I actually soloed Skolos. I think the video should still be either... Uh, it should be on the Joe's Night Flower channel. But I basically soloed him by myself, obviously cheesing it slightly because I used the sword to stop him from killing me. And it was just such a good feeling doing it without dying, man. It was like, ah. Oh. I think I mainly did it because, like, 
I thought you could get like the uh, solo raid achievement at that time, but I think it was already either patched or it just never existed. It was just a rumor. Actually playing VOG. Now, as I mentioned, my Titan had the uh, uh, Wi-Fi booster chess piece from VOG. And uh, yeah, no, it was just, it was weird actually playing it and be like, oh, wow, this, so this is the raid I missed out on. Because I, again, I think I didn't play it before. I think I played missions in Vault of Glass, but I never actually played like the raid itself before, which was, again, mad at the time. And yeah, just the last thing about the um, Moments of Triumph, it's just a good event. It was perfect. It's, it just, it just ended things in the right way. To be honest, that's really all there is to it. Because it, it was just a nice send-off to Destiny 1, man. Now, before I finish up, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the other things in Destiny 2 or Destiny 1 that um, I didn't really mention too much through thing. Now, obviously, music. Whew, man, just, oh, the music's just iconic. I think you could nearly play any piece of Destiny tune to me and I would just recognize it, like... From vanilla to oh, just just any of them, honestly, it's just they're just so good. Like good job, composers for doing your thing. The loot cave. Now I wasn't really around when the loot cave craze was about, but like I remember at one point in the Cosmodrome, I was walking towards the thing and I saw the disturbed pile on the ground or the option to disturb the pile on the ground, and I was like. Wait, what? Is this a part of a quest or something? And I think I looked up, I was like, oh, no, never mind. It's just like a, it's a OMAD to the, um, when you used to be able to just sit in one spot, shoot constantly with your scout rifle into the cave and get, like, uh, loot from it, basically, which was a nice sight to see. I think I looked at a few older videos at the time of people actually farming there, and it just, oh, man. Again, I wish I was a part of that craze. The Destiny 1 Tower... Honestly, between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, I have to say, Destiny 1 Tower is my favourite. I'm sorry. I, I just, I like the way Destiny 1's Tower is. Especially because, I think it's just because it's all cleaner and stuff as well. Like, I'll, like we've been in the current tower for so long. It feels so weird why we're still there. Like, come on, man. <laughs> we've got to upgrade it. Like, even if they just say, you know what? We're going to, like, update the tower and just give it a nice little uh, shine over. It'd just be, it'd just be so nice to finally see it not all like, kind of just clustered together and just scrounged around, you know, you scrounge around for pieces and bits and like, oh, it's cool, just throw that here, throw that there, boom, that's a tower, you know? The Dawning. Honestly, I'm just thinking about the Dawning soundtrack now. I don't know if I'm thinking of Destiny uh, 2's farm soundtrack now, or if I'm actually thinking about Destiny 1. But the Dawning during the time was really good because, again, I'm going to tie this in now. Because it had SRL, which was arguably, like, such a good game mode for them to bring in. It's just a pity. Like, again, I understand why they can't do it now. I just hope Destiny reaches a point in the future where they can, like, afford to um, spend extra resources just to, like, bring in SRL again. That'd be just so cool. But even then, like, I remember the last dawning, and it was just, like, I think I have a video on it as well, like, a montage kind of thing. And, like, you got to open presents in the tower, it was just, oh, so cool. And, like, there was even the exotic version, other uh, elemental versions of Thunderlord. Like, there was not just Thunderlord, there was, like, uh, Ableton, Ableton, or something like that. And, like, some, the Void one I can't remember. But there was basically a solar and a Void, and it was just cool at the time, you know? And, like, I remember as well, afterwards, they're like, oh, yeah, so if you can't get it, like, I think you either had to do the start of the Raft Machine Raid, or you could just get it as a random world drop, which was kind of nice of them to just do, you know? Because it, it'd be weird if you just never, like, brought the weapons back. And, yeah, that's it. After my long-winded discussion, I think it's ready for me to, uh, or it's nearly time for me to pop back into see if the shower is actually warm now. So, thank you so much, Guardians, for watching this video. If you liked it, obviously like it. Comment on your best uh, Destiny 1 nostalgia moments. And honestly, if there's enough points where, like, I haven't even brought up, like, the best, like, nostalgic uh, bits of Destiny 1, then, you know, I might actually make another video and talk about that. Other than that, though, I might consider doing a nostalgic Destiny 2 video. But I think it would have to be on, like, the content that's removed. 
and I'll just like avoid touching content that's still in the game because technically it's not really nostalgic to me anymore because like you know I can go back to Shadowkeep whenever I want it's just like I just choose not to like and subscribe if you want and hit the bell if you do so desire I thank you guys again for watching this video